phone call from Roy last night. He says that things are looking spectacular for the shopping mall. Yeah, I know. Even Quinn says they have a really good chance of getting that contract. And you know how careful she can be. Well, let's keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Who is that nervous dude out there by the gate? Uh, that one holding on to that mean animal with all them teeth. It's just the watchman and his dog, Kurt. Well, I knew it wasn't Lassie, sugar. Oh, hi, Henrietta. <sighs> Hello, Lily. Oh, how them pecan pies coming? You still selling? Yes. How about you? Oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> so, how's my favorite niece? Uh, I'm fine, Aunt Lily. What are you doing up so early? Oh, well, uh, sugar. I'm not exactly up, because I uh, haven't been down, you know, sort of finishing up my working day. But before I do, there's something I want to ask you, Thomasina. What's that? You know that woman you wanted to see the other day at the adoption agency? The social worker? Yeah, I need to know her name and her place of business. Why would you want to know the name of the social worker? Oh, I want that one's name. That lady needs to be, uh, clarified. Six thousand dollars. Well, it's obviously blackmail money. The bills are in sequence. And I I'm know, a... I know, but as far as the case that the district attorney is building against Blaine Ewing, how does it affect that? Well, the case the DA is building against Blaine is based upon uh, motive and opportunity. The Six thousand dollars is incidental at this moment. He could assume that Blaine was being blackmailed. Does that make any sense? Not yet, but not much does in this case. There's too many loose ends. And the district attorney wants to show the public that he's not dragging his feet on this one. Yeah, I know. Well, how about Larry Ewing? Have you talked to him? Yeah, a couple of times. He's a good policeman. Every time I talk to him, he scrupulously avoids mentioning the case to me. He doesn't want to prejudice me. This must be so hard on him. Yes, it is. Well, at least he's taking that training course in Los Angeles very seriously. Good. Now. Give my regards when you talk to him again, will you? That will. As a matter of fact, when I get off duty, if I get off duty, I'm going to check in on his family for him. I'll give him my best, too. Five or six thousand dollars cash, I don't know. I've, I've had some expenses at the office. It's, it's a bad time for me financially. For me, too, otherwise I wouldn't ask. I know. All right, let me see what I have. It's just like I thought. I, uh, I only have a, a couple of hundred in my savings right now, and uh, my checking, I can barely... I can, I can cover my bills. I'm, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. When do you need it? <laughs> now. Uh, well, tomorrow, the day after at the latest. I'll sell some stocks. I'll call my broker today, but it's going to take some time. Well, how much time? A couple of days, I would think. Day after tomorrow? I'll try, Cass. I'll... Super. <laughs> I, uh, I have finally discovered the secret of enjoying jogging. Yeah. Stop it. Yeah, uh... Hi, Cass. Hi. Hi. Look, you two, I have got to go and uh, get dressed. There's coffee in the, in the kitchen. Help yourself. I'll, I'll take you up on that coffee. Stacy, hold on a minute. You're the only person in the world that I can count on. I just want you to know that. You always come through for me. I just don't know how I'm ever going to be able to repay you. Just get out of whatever trouble you're in fast, okay? Be a good brother. <laughs> Thank you. 
Ah, that tastes great. So, do you ever jog, Cass? I used to, but I don't seem to have the time for it these days. Yeah, Stacy's been telling me you've been spending a lot of time on your publishing business. She says it's going very well. We're starting to turn the corner. Good. Felicia Gallant's new book is a runaway bestseller, and we have another one coming out soon. Congratulations. Well, thanks, but it's a bit premature. We're having some cash flow problems, which... Well, that's not your concern. We'll work it out. Stacy used to talk about you a lot when we were in Washington. Too bad you and I never got together. I guess four years ago, we were all doing different things. Hmm. Maybe we could get to know each other better now. Perhaps over dinner. What do you say? Hmm? Maybe we should. I'm leaving for London at the end of the week. But when I get back, let's see about that. Hmm. I better get over to the uh, office. Before you go, Cass, what? I'd like to tell you something. I'm very serious about your sister. Well, I think that's premature, too. Maybe you should get serious about straightening out your life before you get involved with Stacy again. I'm working on it. You were working on it four years this ago. This is different. Look, I never got the whole story of what went on back then, but I do know that Stace had a bad time of it, and she was just coming out of it when you turned up again. What happened back then will not happen now, I can promise you that, Cass. If we can make it through what's going on right now, we'll be just fine. And I intend to spend the rest of my life making Stacy happy. I wish she could be happy right now. Because whatever's happening just isn't doing it. I know that, Cass, but that'll change. It better. Because if something goes wrong, you're going to have an irate older brother to contend with. I see. I'm glad you do. <laughs> Did you get Cory to school on time? Yeah, plenty of time. Oh. Teacher must have been shocked. First day he's been on time since Larry left. Well, it's hard to get everything together around here without any help. Uh, I could help. That little boy of yours uh, won't come near me. He avoids me like the plague. Well, he's tongue-tied around you, Jean. Uh, rude is the word for it. Oh, he looks right through me most of the time. Staring into space, I can't talk to him. Cory is a very friendly little boy. But if someone keeps making him feel like he's always doing something... Well, hi. Bill, come on in. What a surprise. This is a raid. Detective Larry Ewing tipped me off that there were some coffee cakes stashed somewhere on these premises. There he is. He was right. Um, Gene, this is Bill Gorman. He and Larry work together. No, only under emergency circumstances. How are you, Mrs. Ewing? I'm fine. Is Blaine here? Uh, no, she's with her fiancé, Sandy Collier. Are you going to ask her more questions? Uh, it doesn't matter. I'll talk to her later. Larry asked me to look in on his family. <laughs> I guess we're doing fine. Well, can I fix you some breakfast, or are you still on duty? I'm still working, I'm sorry to say. I got a few more things to check on before I can call it quits. Uh, uh, Bill is handling the details of Alma Rudder's murder. Oh, is that so? Well, Blaine was an idiot to go after Alma, but I guess any fool would know she didn't kill that woman. Well, we're just starting the investigation, Mrs. Ewing. And Alma living in a motel like that? No telling what kind of strangers come by. Well, you may be right. Could have been some weirdo. I don't know about that, but it wasn't Blaine. Well, well can you stay for a bite at least? How about some of my coffee cake? <laughs> Even if I could, I'm on a coffee cake free diet. But you asked for it. Well, it's for the guys. Ever since Larry brought your coffee cake to the station, he's been the most popular man on the force, and I've become 10 pounds heavier. <laughs> you look just as you always did, just when you and Charlotte and Larry and I used to double date. Yeah, so, what shall I report to Sergeant Ewing? Oh, well, tell Larry that everything's uh, about the same as always. Will do. Nice seeing you again, Mrs. Ewing. You must be a real good friend, Sergeant, to keep an eye on Larry's family like you're doing. Oh, Larry's my best friend. And do the same thing for me. You sure would. It's awfully nice of you to come by. Only Corey's going to be sorry to miss you. Hey, you tell that little fellow that um, maybe if he wants, we can catch a baseball game. If he wants? You know, he still talks about the game that you and Larry took him to last year. 
He says it's a favorite night of his whole life. <laughs> he even saved the program. <laughs> All right, we'll do it one night next week. You tell him I'll buy the tickets if he brings the Cracker Jacks. Oh, I will. Thanks, Phil. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Does he stop by often? Oh, no, not often. He's kind of good looking, isn't he? Oh, I guess so. Play in the field, like he put it. I guess he sees a lot of women. <laughs> Probably. Maybe he'd like to see one more. What are you talking about? Sure doesn't show his face when Larry's around here, does he? Well, they work together. They see enough of each other at the station house. But maybe he doesn't see enough of you. You know, they wanted him to look in and see that we're all all right. That was very sweet of Bill to do that. It was very sweet of him to take your son to baseball games, too. Except it seems to me that's Larry's place to do, not his. Larry's grateful to him for it. I mean, Bill's like an uncle to the kids. How about you, Clarice? What's Bill to you? What? You heard me. Yes, I did hear you, but I don't believe my ears. Clarice, that man is obviously more than a friend. I mean, he, you lit up like a Christmas tree. How dare you? How do I dare? Well, you stand around here flirting with that man right in front of me, and you can say that to me? Well, you have got some nerve. No, I don't have enough nerve, or else I would have told you I'm sick of you. I'm sick of the nasty things you think and the way you whine and complain all the time. Well, you couldn't wait for Larry to get out of this house so you could let me have it. You're the one who lets everybody have it, including Corey. My little boy is so tongue-tied, he can't even say anything around his family, and it's because of you. Well, at least he's quiet. Well, it's your turn to be quiet, because I'm through listening to you. Well, wait till I just tell Larry. He'll, he'll listen to me. Uh, tell him how his wife is carrying on with other men in his oh, own home. That's it! I've had it! Oh, I'm fine. Really, I'm just in a little bit of financial bind. I need to sell a few stocks. Oh, about six thousand dollars. Oh, now that's good news. Fine, fine. Sell some of those. When can I get the check? No, day after tomorrow is just fine. Okay. Thanks a lot, John. I'll talk to you soon. Bye bye. All settled. Yes. I, um, I guess I'll call Cass later and tell him. Yeah. Will, What's... what are your plans today? Hey. I'm going over to Max. See uh, Sandy later. Mm -hmm. And I hope Lane is there, too. I'm going to have a meeting about the articles I'm writing. Uh, I hope she can help me with research, if she can, uh, with this uh, investigation going on. Uh, how's your stand now? Uh, well, Grapevine has it that the DA is preparing a case against her, so right now she's on a tightrope. She's got a great lawyer. I know that Blaine did not kill Alma Rudder. It's just going to be hard to prove it. You'll do it. By the way, I asked Cass to join me for dinner when he gets back from London. You did? Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. I hope the two of you hit it off. So do I, but I think I'm going to have to work pretty hard to gain his confidence. Why? What did he say? It's not so much what he said. It's very protective of you. It's a typical big brother. Typical? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Cass has always led his own life, you know, and, and one that has not borne close scrutiny, I might add, but as far as I'm concerned, he has always, he's always been there for me. I mean, he's always been ready to do battle with anyone that might hurt me. Yes. Typical. Typical? Typical. Typical. Office. Court. Court. We're awfully glad to see you here, and these are from Amanda. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, Rachel. They're beautiful. <clears throat> Rachel, hmm. thanks for taking such good care of Blaine while I was in the hospital. Oh, honey, she not only took good care of me, you should have heard her tell off the police the other day. Yes, yes I heard about that. You better watch it. I know, no more double parking in this town for me. <laughs> Your bed is all made up, Mr. Corey, and I want you lying down for at least one hour's rest, all right? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Well, you've got a tough one there. Yeah. The tougher, the better. My son is no model patient. Well, he's going to be. Come on, it's just that I have work to do. First, honey, um, I want to get you into bed. Okay. 
Say good night, Sandy. <laughs> good night, everybody. Good night. Oh. Rest well, son. Thanks, Dad. I'm glad you stopped by. You're a real tonic around here. Why, well, thank you. Can I get you something? No, no, I have to go. I, I want to stop by and see Mom, and I'm going over to the gallery. Oh, is the woman who's running that working out for you? Oh, she's working out very well. She doesn't need me at all, which means I've got to go over there and remind her I'm around. <laughs> Wait a minute, Rachel. Oh, excuse me. Yes? Mac, it's Clarice. Is Blaine there? Oh, Clarice, is something wrong? Uh, no, I, I, just, I just need to talk to Blaine. Yes, hold on. I'll get her right away. Blaine! Blaine! What is it, Mr. I don't know. Something's wrong with Clarice. Yes, Mac? It's Clarice. She's upset. Oh. Clarice, what's wrong? Blaine, can you come over? Well, what happened? I can't talk on the phone. Please, Blaine. Okay, all right, just, just calm down. I'll be right over. Now, try to stay calm till I get there, okay? All right, bye. She didn't say what it was, but I'll bet you anything it was Ma again. I'm sorry, I got... Please tell Sandy where I am. All right. I hope everything works out. Yeah, thanks. I'll see you later. All right, well, that Jean Ewing, she's very difficult, you know. Well, I'd better get going. No, no, you're not going anywhere. I, I'm not, I... Not for a few minutes, anyway. What is it you want to talk to me about, Mike? The future. Sandy's awake. I told him that Blaine had gone over to see Clarice. Oh, Mrs. Oliver brought coffee. How nice. Would you like a cup? Yes, all right. What are you thinking? Uh, about Jean Ewing. I hope something can be done about her before Blaine and Sandy get married. Well, I think Blaine can handle her. I hope so. She's the kind of woman who uh, goes around paying for her sins, you know, and making everybody else pay. Yeah, I know the type. Mom said she thought that things would get worse once, you know, Larry was out of town. Let's play a game. What are you, brushing up on your old maid skills? <laughs> no. This is a new game. For a few minutes, we're not going to think about Sandy and Blaine, or the Ewings. Or the Al Morata case. I get the impression you're trying to narrow the topic of conversation. Exactly. To you and me. My two favorite topics. Rachel, I'm well aware that it's only a matter of weeks since you regained your sight. Yes. And a matter of months since Steve died in a car accident. Yes. You've been through a lot, an awful lot. And I haven't wanted to pressure you by talking about my own feelings. But now, I think the time has come. You know, Mac, you can always tell me anything you want. I love you. I always have. Through all our years, through all that's happened to us, I never stopped. So I'm facing the fact. I'm never, ever going to get you out of my system. Nor do I want to. And facing that fact, that I have in me a love which is deep and endless has brought me more happiness than anything I've ever known in my life. That's all I wanted to say. Now it's your turn. You're a tough act to follow. <laughs> Try. That was lovely to hear. 
And it means very much to me. Uh. I share those feelings. I always have. But we've been together before, Mac. Twice before. But we're not the same people now, Rachel. Mac, you and I both still have our terrible tempers, and there's that mulishness. Well, my temper has improved enormously. What about the mulishness? Well, I'm working on that. <laughs> <laughs> right. So am I. I'm working on it, too. You, you know that. I just want us to be sure. I don't want us to fail again. But remember, each of those times that we sprang apart, we always came back together. Now, that in itself must prove something, you know. I don't know what. <laughs> but you're right. No pressure. Just know that that's what I'm feeling. And I hope you'll think about it. I will. Constantly. I'm going to have to think about something else, too. What's that? It's been too long since you've been to this office. I noticed there were some changes in the lobby. Yes, that's Donna Love's work. Is she going to redecorate the rest of the place? Well, I don't know. In the beginning, she did her brother Peter's office, and one thing sort of led to another. I'm really not sure. Mm. Well, it's expensive, very expensive. Why don't you sit down, Rachel? Mm. There isn't anything wrong out at the house, is no, there? No, everything's fine. Oh, did you come in town on gallery business? Yes, and something else. What's that? Murder. Murder? Alma's murder. But, Rachel, Blaine has been cleared. She has an airtight alibi. I know. Why do you still feel involved in this? Are you telling me I should be minding my own business? <laughs> no, no. If you have some ideas, I'd love to hear them. Well, you see, that's just it. I, I don't know about my ideas. I mean, they're not grounded in fact, so I can't go to the police. If Larry were around, I, I'd try them out on him, but he's not, you know, and I'm very afraid of getting somebody in trouble without, you know, being sure of my facts. You're talking about Cecile? Yes. Well, she is their most likely suspect now that they've cleared Blaine. Yes, but there's Cass, too. Yes, we have to assume he gave $6,000 to Cecile to pay off Alma. Yeah, no, 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 wait a minute, though. There's something else. Oh? I can't find it. Oh, yeah. See, this waitress told the police about this man, this tall, dark, handsome man, who came to the diner the night before Alma was murdered, asking questions about Nell, which is Alma's name, or the name she was going by. Well, that is interesting. Mm-hmm. And you think... The description fits Cass. Well, it's possible, isn't it? I mean, he found out where Alma was, and then, and then he went and told Cecile. But, Rachel, as you yourself said, you must be very careful about mentioning names. Cass may be completely innocent, you know. He may be, but I doubt it. In any event, it would be terribly destructive for Cass if he were implicated wrongly. I know. Well, that's why I've decided I'll go over to Felicia Gallant's today while I'm in town. Have another talk with her. I don't believe it. Unlike some people I know. Well, I do envy you. <laughs> I mean, I can't go anywhere that I don't need two sky caps just to get me to the limousine. <laughs> there you go. Thanks. All right. To Barclay Square. And all the nightingales that sing in it. Yes, and to a lucrative business trip for Winthrop Publishing. Here, here. Cheers. Oh, my. Mm. Good. Mm. I, um, I have the limousine coming in about ten minutes, okay? Good. That'll give me plenty of time. Well, 
Were you able to help your sister? Yeah. Or at least I hope so. I think she was feeling better when I left. Good. I'll give her a call tomorrow. Yeah, you do that. Okay. Now, tell me, are you going to be a good girl while I'm out of the country? No hanky-panky, no fooling around? I'll try. Oh, really? Now, how would you like it if I said the same thing to you? I'll try. Mm. Well, I probably wouldn't mind so much if you were honest with me when you return, because I would be honest with you. Oh, yeah. Come on. What? You know that I'm basically an honest person. I know that. You know, I could forgive a lot if there is honesty. I can, too. Yes, I think you can. But I do think we differ in one area. Well, what's that? I could never forgive you if you weren't honest. You do understand that, don't you? Of course I do. Person I expected to see. I'm sorry I didn't call first. Well, if you had called, I would have probably told you that I was very busy. Felicia, we have to talk seriously about something. 